If you are planning to visit Munnar and searching for the best places to explore, then this video is made just for you. Hey guys, welcome back to Secret Cubes and this is Sagar. Today, we will be uncovering the top 20 places to visit in Munnar. In case you haven't watched the first part of Munnar series, then do watch it after this video. I'll drop a link to that video in the description box below. Now let's get back to the topic. If you look at the maps, you will notice 4 routes leading from Munnar and all the major tourist attractions are located along these routes. To make it easy to understand, I have grouped these places and listed them according to these routes. That being said, let's dive deep into our list of top 20 places to visit in Munnar. While sharing my Munnar stories on Instagram, I received so many DMs asking me not to miss Kolokumalai Peak. Although I knew it was a beautiful place, I never realized it is actually that popular. When you search for images of Kolokumalai on Google map, you will only see these pictures of mountains. However, Kolokumalai is actually a small village situated on Kerala Tamil Nadu border and officially belongs to Tamil Nadu. Kolokumalai is the world's highest organic tea plantation. It is said that the tea grown here has a distinct flavor and freshness because of high altitude. But the reason why it is so popular and indeed deserves to be popular is for its mesmerizing sunrise and stunning views. You can embark on a sunrise tour to Kolokumalai and here is how you can do it. From Munnar, start as early as 4 am and reach Suryanali which is approximately 20 kilometers from Munnar. From here, you will need to hire a jeep that usually charges around 2000 rupees to 2500 rupees for a group of 6 to 7 people. Alternatively, you can hire a jeep directly from Munnar itself. That is what we did, although it was a bit more expensive. After hiring the jeep, you will be required to stop at forest check post and get the permission by submitting your name and phone number. The journey from Surinali to Kolokamala Peak is around 10 km out of which 6 km is completely off-road. This journey is going to be one hell of a ride. So if you are planning with aged parents, then I suggest you skip this place. Once you reach the summit, you need to walk about 100 meters from the parking area to reach the sunrise viewpoint. Make sure to be here by 6 am to witness the sunrise. The place was mostly covered in fog except for a brief moment when we were blessed with the stunning sunrise. If you continue walking along the edge, you will come across this famous Jaguar point, an incredible spot for photography. While our trip to Kolokumalai was amazing, let's talk about a few downsides that people often don't mention. Due to its popularity, a large number of tourists visit Kolokumalai every single day. While you expect this place to look like this, it was actually looking like this when we visited. I recommend planning your trip to Kolokumalai on a weekday to avoid such crowds. The second concern is related to safety. The sunrise viewpoint is situated along the edge and unfortunately there are no safety railings to protect against any potential accidents. Be extra cautious while exploring this place. Lastly, the timings were a bit tight. Our jeep driver gave us less than an hour to enjoy the sunrise and return. I personally felt it was way too less time to explore such a lovely place. Located at the far end of Tekadi direction, the Anayarengal Dam is one of the most stunning dams we encountered during our visit to Munnar. Since it is quite far from Munnar and not many people explore this route, you will find very less crowds here. The main highlight here is the boating and I must say it was one of the best experiences that we had during our trip. If you are visiting with your family, especially children, then this place is ideal for a picnic. Unfortunately, there are no restaurants in the vicinity, so make sure to carry food and water accordingly. While we were exploring the surrounding area, we stumbled upon a hidden gem near this lake. With no tourists around, it felt like we had the entire scenic beauty of lake and tea plantations all to ourselves. On the Gap Road, just after the Lockhart tea plantations, you will find a stunning waterfalls known as Chinnakanal waterfalls, also referred as Parayakanal waterfalls. Unlike most waterfalls that are situated inside the forest, this waterfall flows right through tea plantations. During the monsoon season and shortly after that, the waterfall offers mesmerizing view, but it may have less water during other times of the year. Since the waterfall is situated on a private property, you can't get into the falls but you can still enjoy the views along with the tea and local snacks from roadside stalls. Mm -hmm. 
Munnar is home to numerous tea estates and one of the oldest among them is the Lockhart Tea Estate. Here you can capture stunning photos with the backdrop of tea plantations. If you want to have a closer look at the tea plantations, then you can buy a ticket to enter the tea plantations as well. Inside the Lockhart Tea Estate, there is also a tea museum, but I don't recommend visiting it for two reasons. It is quite expensive and photography is not permitted inside the factory. After seeing the gardens and parks in Uti and Kodaikanal, I had a lot of expectations from Munnar. However, to my surprise, the gardens in Munnar were nowhere close to my expectations. Although there are several gardens in Munnar with a wide variety of flowers and plants, they were not very impressive. If you are visiting Munnar with family, especially kids, and want to spend some time in garden or park, then I would recommend visiting Government Botanical Garden. It has a good collection of exotic flowers and plants, a designated area for children to play, and a seating area to relax and enjoy your time. Additionally, this place transforms into a lovely place at night. There will be a fountain show in the evening as well. Before I talk about Irvikulam National Park, let me introduce you to this mountain goat called Nilgiri Thar. It is the state animal of Tamil Nadu. They love to stay in high altitude open grasslands and the Nilgiri mountain range between Kerala and Tamil Nadu is a perfect home for them. There was a time when Nilgiri Thar used to dominate the southern region of India, but in the early 19th century, things went terribly wrong for them. Because of illegal hunting, poaching and extensive deforestation, their population dropped drastically. By the end of 20th century, there were just a few hundred Nilgiri Thars in the wild. We were about to lose one of the very rare species of animal that is found only in India. It was soon declared an endangered species and a lot of efforts were put to conserve these Nilgiri Thars. And the efforts paid off. Now we have more than 3,000 Nilgiri Thars in the country with a significant population found in Irvikulam National Park. If you want to see these mountain goats, then a visit to Irvikulam National Park is a must. Make sure to visit it in the morning as there will be higher chance of spotting Nilgiri Thar. Upon entering Irvikulam National Park, you will be taken on a beautiful bus ride for around 2-3 to km and then you can go on a 1 km nature walk. You can visit the information center to learn a bit about National Park and its biodiversity. There is a small restaurant in case you want to have food. You can pre-book your tickets online to avoid waiting in the long queues when you visit the National Park. Also note that National Park would be closed for public in February and March, so if you are visiting in these months, you can skip this place. Located next to Irvikulam National Park is the enchanting Lakkam Waterfalls. These waterfalls originate from within the National Park and joins Pamba River, which eventually flows into the Kaveri River. While it may not be the tallest waterfall, it still offers a spectacular view, especially during monsoon season. The best part about these waterfalls is that you can actually get into the water and enjoy playing in it. However, when the water flow is high, entering the water is usually prohibited. The place will be slippery near waterfalls, so be extra cautious, especially if you are visiting with aged parents or kids. Basic facilities such as changing rooms, clean toilets, security guards and the restaurants are available at this place. It might feel like a crime not to visit a tea factory when you are in Munnar. But to be honest, our visit to tea factory in Munnar wasn't a great experience. Despite Munnar being the major producers of tea, the overall experience at tea factory here were not that satisfying. While the entry fee for a tea factory in Uti was just 10 rupees along with a free cup of tea, the entry fee for tea factories in Munnar can be anywhere between 100 rupees to 200 rupees. Moreover, most tree factories do not allow photography or videography. If you still want to visit a tea factory, I recommend visiting KDHP Tea Museum, formerly known as Tata Tea Museum, near Erivikulam National Park. Here, you'll first watch the pre-recorded video that showcases the history of tea in Munnar and the surrounding places, how tea was introduced in this area and how KDHP was born. You can also see old photographs and vintage items displayed here. Finally, you will enter the most interesting part of museum, the manufacturing area. Here, you can witness the entire tea making process from the conversion of green leaves to the tea powder. After the factory tour, you can shop for variety of tea products here. You don't have to visit the tea factory to buy this tea. 
you can find many outlets of Ripple tea across Munnar for shopping. Let's explore one of the most popular routes on Mathapitta direction starting with the first attraction known as Photo Point. As the name suggests, it is a popular spot for taking nice photos against the backdrop of tea estates. This place can get pretty crowded during weekends and people would be photobombing every time. You'll find a lot of professional photographers who can capture some great photos for you. I personally felt Munnar is filled with hundreds of such beautiful spots where you can take good photos. So worry not even if you need to skip this place. Before I talk about Eco Point, listen to this. Sagar! What the hell? Let's go by <laughs> Yes, you can actually hear a clear echo at Eco Point in Munnar. I have visited so many places labeled as Eco Points before, but I never heard echo like this. Here in Munnar, it actually works. If you search online, you'll find several points tagged as Eco Point near Matupati Dam. And most of them should produce a clear echo like this. The one we visited was situated here. One reason why we could hear clear echo might be because we went there late in the evening and there was no one around. So make sure you either visit early in the morning or late in the evening to experience this phenomena. The Mathupati Dam was constructed in the late 1940s to conserve water and generate electricity. While many tourists take photos near the dam gate, the view from here is not as impressive. I would recommend moving a little further to enjoy the breathtaking view of the dam. The main attraction at Mathupati is boating where you can choose between pedal boats and speed boats. However, I would suggest going for boating at Kundala Dam instead as it is even more beautiful. Munnar is surrounded by numerous stunning reservoirs, lakes and dams among which Kundala Dam is one of them. This place is quite popular because of its stunning views and kid-friendly activities. If you miss the opportunity for boating at Anayarangal Dam, then boating at Kundala Dam is a must-do activity. In addition to regular pedal boats, you can also find Kashmiri-style Shikara boats here. Attached to the lake is a small stretch of pine forest which serves as a fantastic spot for photography. Here, you can enjoy some peaceful time amidst the nature. This place is a bit touristy and crowded most of the time, so make sure to be here as early as possible to avoid the crowd. Back in early 1900s, Munnar had a rail connectivity for transporting tea leaves and this particular spot was the highest point, hence the station was named Top Station. However, you don't find any traces of railway station or tracks now as they were all washed away during floods of 1924. Instead, what you can enjoy now is the breathtaking view of the surrounding hills. This place actually lies in Tamil Nadu and the only way to reach it is through Kerala. The top station is the last attraction along Mathupati direction. It will be crowded most of the time with the local tourists. There is a watchtower from where you can get a panoramic view of the mountain ranges. There are many shops and small eateries at this place. Apart from this, there is nothing much to do here. If you want to avoid crowded places, then you can skip this place. Elephant Park would be the first attraction you'll find on Mathapati direction. You can see 4 to 5 trained elephants here and you can go on an elephant ride if you like to. It can be a good stop if you are visiting with kids as an elephant ride would be a memorable experience for them. However, I personally don't recommend visiting this place for two reasons. Firstly, it is quite expensive and not worth the price. The trail through which you go on an elephant ride is not that exciting. Secondly, I have concerned about using animals for tourism. There have been reports of mishandling of elephants at this park. If you are eager to see elephants, I highly recommend visiting Dubare Elephant Camp in Karnataka instead. There are a few more places on this route like Forest Garden, Botanical Garden and Tea Factory, I suggest skipping them as well since they are not worth the visit. One of the most visited places along Kochi route is Kalari Kshetra. Whenever you see a video about Kerala, Kathakali and Kalari Payattu would be the first thing that you would probably see. Kalari Payattu is Kerala's ancient martial art and is believed to be the origin of all other martial arts including Kung Fu. 
Kalari Payetu has a history of more than 3000 years and the people of Kerala are making great efforts to preserve it. Kalari Kshetra is one such initiative where they showcase this art form in an entertaining way. Kathakali, another traditional art form, is also performed at Kalari Kshetra. There are two shows organized every day with Kathakali show from 5 pm to 6 pm and Kalari Payetu show from 6 pm to 7 pm. There are mixed reviews about Kathakali show but the Kalari Payetu is definitely a must watch. The artists were highly skilled and showcased some thrilling stunts. The best part is that we had opportunity to meet them in person and take photos with them. If you are looking for a less crowded and offbeat destination, then Ripal Waterfalls is a perfect place for you. This waterfalls is located a bit far from Munnar, that's why it attracts less crowd. During monsoon and post monsoon seasons, the waterfalls exhibit a strong water flow offering stunning views for visitors. However, because the currents here are strong, getting into the waterfalls is prohibited. If you are looking for an adventurous experience, then you can try zip lining here costing around 500 rupees per head. This zip line goes right across the waterfalls, so it is definitely going to be a thrilling experience. Located in the Thrissur district, Athirappalli waterfall is the largest waterfall in Kerala. It is famously known as Bahubali waterfalls because the scene from movie Bahubali was shot here. Athirappalli waterfall is more than 130 kilometers from Munnar, so usually it is not included in the Munnar itinerary, but it is definitely worth a visit especially in monsoon. If you are traveling from Kochi or Alva to Munnar, you can take a detour to visit Athirappalli waterfalls. During monsoon or post monsoon season, the extra distance you traveled would be totally worth it with this kind of views. Chiyapara waterfalls and Vallara waterfalls are two more waterfalls you will come across on your way to Munnar. Both these waterfalls are small in size, yet they offer breathtaking views especially during monsoon season. If you are traveling by car from Kochi or Alva to Munnar, consider adding them to your itinerary as a quick stop to enjoy the beautiful waterfalls. If you are interested in trekking, then Munnar offers some great trekking trails. Chakramudi Peak is one such lesser known trekking spot in Munnar. The trek distance is just 3 kilometers, but due to steep trail, it can take up to 2 hours to reach the peak. The difficulty level is considered intermediate to moderate, so it is not suitable for children or age parents. The trek opens at 5:30 in the morning, and you need to obtain forest permission before trekking. The permission costs 400 rupees per person, and you can buy it on the spot. Remember to carry water and food as there are no facilities available along the route. The view from the peak is truly rewarding and worth the effort. If you are looking for an offbeat experience in Munnar, then consider visiting Misapuli Mala Peak. It is the second highest peak in South India and can be easily trekked. However, the Misapuli Mala trek is not a typical day trek. The trek is organized by Kerala Forest Department. and the package includes overnight stay at misapuli mala base camp meals and trek cost and the next day early morning you can embark on a sunrise trek it is a 1 and 1/2 hour moderate level trek this is the typical itinerary that was shared by one of the tour operators you can ping them on instagram for more details that was my list of the top 20 places to visit in munnar comment down if you know any hidden gem in munnar that i missed If you have any question regarding Munnar trip, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Also let me know if you want me to cover any particular destination. If you haven't watched my previous video of Munnar where I covered a lot of details like how to reach Munnar, where to stay, places to eat, budget and much more by clicking on this video shown on the screen. See you in my next video. Until then, keep traveling.